So let's now change gears a little bit and talk more about liquids. And liquids are really interesting. So in a liquid, um, which is different than a gas, arguably a little bit, um, there's some special constraints. In a liquid, the molecules constantly moving around, you have pretty good intermolecular forces. Now remember, gases move around a lot, but they didn't have any intermolecular forces, or at least in Chem 222 and Chem 223. Also compared to gases, liquids, the molecules are pretty close together, it's almost impossible to compress a liquid. Now you can compress gases. You can take uh, three liters of gas and compress it down to a milliliter or something like that without too much difficulty. But liquids are pretty hard to do that. Also, liquids don't fill the container. Like you pour the liquid in and it takes up whatever volume it needs. A gas will completely fill the container if you quote unquote pour it into a container. Quite a little bit different there between liquids and gas. According to the kinetic molecular theory, the molecules of a solid are locked in place, though they have motion. Molecules of a liquid are closely associated with each other, but move relative to one another. Molecules of a gas move independently and occupy a much larger volume than those of a corresponding liquid or solid. So you can probably see then that to turn a gas into a liquid, you would probably have to lower the kinetic energy, which would be one possibility, or you'd have to somehow make intermolecular forces kick in to hold the molecules together. And we'll talk about the transformations and stuff uh, between the two in a little bit. If you're going to turn a liquid into a gas, you have to break the intermolecular forces in the liquids. Remember, liquids have intermolecular forces and solids as well, but not gases. And if you break intermolecular forces, that's going to require some energy. So going from a liquid to a gas is going to be endothermic. It's going to take energy to make that happen. And the practical, more common term for turning a liquid into a gas is evaporation. So evaporation just means you're turning a liquid into a gas, it's endothermic, and that's kind of interesting. On the other hand, if you want to take your gas and turn it back into a liquid, you're going to have to form intermolecular bonds to make those gas molecules kind of stick together. Um, you're going to have to remove some of the kinetic energy inherent to the gas molecules. You can do that through cooling or something like that. But in the process, you're going to end up releasing energy. The energy of those gas molecules is going to be released as the intermolecular forces form. So actually going in a condensation, energy is actually released. So evaporation means liquid to gas and it's endothermic. Condensation means taking the gas, turning back into a liquid. And believe it or not, that's exothermic. Energy is released. If you're going to turn a liquid into a gas, all right, you have to have enough energy to break the intermolecular forces which hold them together, all right? And that's maybe not a strong feat. Another thing about turning a liquid into a gas is that if it's hard to turn a liquid at the bottom of the liquid into a gas, usually what happens is it's the outside, i.e. the perimeter, if you will, between the liquid and the gas. So this little picture right here, the liquid is below the line and the gases are are above. And the liquids that will be able to turn into a gas, you'd have to give them energy and they'll be on the outside, the surface of the liquid, and they'll go up. But some of the gas molecules on the top will say, oh, I really want to go back to the liquid phase. So they go back to the gas phase. So you can see in that little picture, some of the arrows go up, that's liquid going to gas. Some of the arrows go down, that's gas going to liquid. This is a very dynamic process, all right? And again, going from the liquid to the gas, you have to break those intermolecular forces. It's going to be endothermic. Molecules of a liquid have a range of kinetic energies. Some have enough energy to overcome intermolecular forces. If these high energy molecules are at the surface of the liquid, they can escape into the gas phase. This is an endothermic process. This is an open container, so the gas molecules are escaping, going off into wherever they go, all right, and that's fine. A closed container we're going to see later is a different story. But again, in the chemical theory of the KMT, only the surface molecules are actually able to break free. The molecules down below, if they got enough energy, they would just smack into another liquid molecule. The energy would be transferred through something like momentum from physics, and uh, it would still remain a 
liquid. But the process of going from liquid to a gas, endothermic, takes energy to break the intermolecular forces. Like we saw with gases, liquids have a range of energies and they're temperature dependent and all that kind of stuff. So in the graph on the left, we have a blue line and a red line. And the blue line represents the distribution of energies in a liquid at a lower temperature. And the red line represents the distribution of energies at a higher temperature. And also, I want to have you focus on the dotted line right there. And that represents the energy required Required to turn a liquid into a gas. So you'll see that at the higher temperature, you have a lot more percentage, if you will, of molecules past the dotted line. And those are the ones that in theory can turn from a liquid to a gas. They have enough energy. Most of the lower temperature ones don't have enough energy to turn into a gas, so they stay as a liquid. But notice down here, there's a really small area, I'm going to kind of highlight it messy there, of molecules that do have enough energy to turn into a gas. And we're going to talk about those here in a little bit. The important thing here is that kinetic energy, the energy of the molecules, is proportional to temperature. So you keep raising the temperature and you're going to have more molecules able to break from the liquid to a gas. But even at the higher temperatures, all right, you're always going to have some of the higher temperatures uh, going to want to stay there. I mean, eventually they're all going to go, all right? But at first, there's always going to be some small percentage that really, really, really wants to stay a liquid. Only when you keep adding energy, 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 do they all turn one way or the other the other. So this is again how scientists think about it and we're trying to think about like the amount of liquid molecules that turn into the vapor or gas state. So this brings up the idea of what's called vapor pressure. And vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by the little bit of gas above a liquid. And like we saw in the last picture, even at the lower temperatures, there's always going to be a little bit of gas. So some of the molecules have enough energy to break into the gas. As you increase the temperature, you have more and more molecules able to have a gas. Remember, pressure is the direct result of gas. So this is the gas above a liquid. And all liquids, arguably anyway, have a little bit of gas above them. Now, you always have an equilibrium vapor pressure possible if you put a flask lid, if you will, on the container. So in this example here with the liquid, there's a stopper. It's keeping the gas molecules from going away. And if you let it wait just a little bit, the amount of evaporation equals the amount of the condensation or the speed or rate of evaporation equals the speed of condensation, your vapor pressure will be a constant. It's a measurable amount. You can measure it in atmospheres or millimeters of mercury. And the vapor pressure is actually really important to understanding how liquids and gases interact. In a closed container, molecules move back and forth between the liquid and gas phases. If the rates of crossover are equivalent, the overall amount of substance in each phase remains constant. The system is said to be in a state of dynamic equilibrium. This dynamic equilibrium just means liquids are constantly turning into gases and gases are constantly turning into liquids. And again, as long as you have a closed system, i.e. a stopper on your flask, uh, then you will have this. And this vapor pressure does some really interesting things when it comes to chemistry. The liquid in the butane lighter is in dynamic equilibrium with the gaseous butane which has a vapor pressure of about 2.4 atmospheres. When the valve is opened, butane gas escapes from the lighter. The system goes out of equilibrium, and liquid butane rapidly evaporates into the gas phase. When the valve is closed, the system quickly comes to equilibrium again, with the pressure of the butane vapor equal to 2.4 atmospheres. A cigarette lighter is actually a pretty interesting kind of device because what you have in there butane. Uh, butane is a, just barely a liquid at room temperature. But above the butane, you have vapor pressure. Some of the butane has enough energy to turn into a gas. So when you're ready to use the cigarette lighter, you push the thing down and a spark happens. The butane comes off. A combustion reaction occurs, which is butane plus oxygen making CO2 and water. But anyway, the 
flame appears, all right? And the flame appears because the gas, the vapor pressure over the liquid is trying to escape. It's burning up as it goes through, no problem. Well, after a while, you're done with your lighter, so you close it off again. The equilibrium vapor pressure is reestablished, so the next time you light up, all right, the, the cigarette lighter comes back. Another thing is that when your cigarette lighter is just about done, at first, like, nothing happens, so you put it down, but then later on, maybe you forget that it was supposedly dead, and you light up, and oh, there's a little bit there. Sometimes the vapor pressure uh, reestablishes itself enough to make a last-minute light. It's kind of interesting. 